which is the worst single decision in history ever made by a person. Alright gentlemen we've successfully fended off the Greeks for 10 years. Our great city of Troy still stands. If we keep this up surely they will realize the siege is fruitless and return home before long. Yo captain there's this big ass wooden horse outside. Oh rad bring it in. Well. The decision of Inolchuk. The governor of the Khwarazmian city of Otra. To attack Genghis Khan's trade caravan was pretty bad. Khan was famous as a ruthless warlord. Not the sort of guy you want to piss off. But maybe they could have got away with it. Genghis sent three ambassadors to negotiate a settlement. Which is when Muhammad I, the Shah of Khorzam, made the really bad decision to kill one of these ambassadors and send the other two back without their beards as a sign of humiliation. Genghis Khan was so enraged he assembled an army and destroyed the Khwarazmian Empire. Wiped out every town they had. He even rerouted a river to wipe out the village where the Shah was born. Wiping it off the map. By 1120 there wasn't much of anything left. So. Both in old Chuck or Muhammad I of course and qualify. Take your pick. In the beginning the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry and been widely regarded as a bad move. Robert Ballard. One of the guys who discovered Titanic. Says that his biggest regret is that he and Jean-Luc Michel didn't bring a piece of the Titanic up with him when he first discovered it in 1985. At the time. They didn't want to disturb the wreck. And leave it pristine. But if they had done so. Then they would have been able to claim legal ownership of the wreck under international maritime law. And therefore more control over it. Because they chose not to do that. Everyone and their grandma is free to take artifacts and pieces of the wreck. And this makes preservation impossible. Edit. A fair number of people have been asking this in the comments. So instead of replying to everyone individually, I thought I'd put this in as an edit. And thanks to the commenters who helped explain this, there is a school of thought which Robert Ballard, and myself, incidentally, subscribes to, which is that the wreck is the final resting place of the more than 1,500 souls who perished that cold night on the 14th of April 1912 and must therefore be treated with the same respect and dignity. Private companies who take artifacts and pieces of the wreck and sell them for profit are effectively grave robbing. And while the wreck is gradually deteriorating into nothing, the argument is that this doesn't matter, it's just nature taking its course. Of course, there is the argument that removing certain artifacts from the wreck and putting them in a museum is conducive to both the public good and the memory of the victims. I don't have a problem with that, personally, and I can't speak for Robert Ballard, but I do have a problem with the commercial scavengers taking pieces up to sell them. My understanding is that if he and his team were the registered owners of the wreck, he would have a claim to anything taken from the wreck and sold for profit, which would potentially deter people. Eastman Kodak deciding not to go forward with their own newly invented digital cameras and instead sticking with film because it made them so much money at the time. Alan Savory, the ecologist who killed 40,000 elephants because it was believed that grazing was causing the desertification of Africa, only to find out later that elephants were essential to prevent desertification. How about the guy who bought 20,000 Albanian slaves, brought them to Cairo, trained them to be the greatest warriors of their time, and then got overthrown by said slave warriors because they were so well trained? Time Suck podcast about Napoleon Bonaparte is where I got this from. It's a good one if you have an hour to listen. Also Beades was considered a traitor in Athens for leading his men to death. A traitor in Sparta because he got the queen to cheat on the king with him and a traitor in Persia after including them in a war. Edit. So I did a little bit of info and the switching sides and stealing statues these are also true plus he is a bisexual. Not like there is anything wrong with bisexuality. Mao Zedong's revolutionary campaign The Great Leap Forward resulting in millions of people starving to death. Not the worst in the world but apparently my family owned a little town west of Kent, UK. My great 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 grandfather got plastered one night and gambled it all away or... Maybe not the worst. But maybe Ronald Wayne. He was a co-founder of Apple along with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak in 1976. Just 12 days after forming the company, he sold his shares for $800. He owned 10% of the company, which would be worth $80 billion. 80 billion. 
Today, source, don't know how accurate this is, but the story still stands. Either the great leap forward or the time I had gas station sushi. The Donner Party of 90 pioneers choosing to take a shortcut when heading west from Illinois to California in 1846. Said shortcut led to them getting trapped in the Sierra Nevada mountains and resorting to cannibalism. The decision by the Scottish to invade England during Black Death must be up there. Now you see me sequel not being called now you don't. Kaiser Wilhelm II firing Otto von Bismarck. Bismarck had a plan. He always has a plan. But not when an incompetent Kaiser boots him out of his means of putting his plans into action. Bismarck had everything set up perfectly, but Wilhelm II decided to duck up everything he had set up, and got into World War 1 for it. Edit. Fact Gold Kindle Strangler if you want to learn more about the greatest chad in European history since Voltaire. I highly recommend watching this series, which goes over Bismarck pretty well. Yahoo refused to buy Google for 1 million, and later for 40 billion again. Edit. They refused 1 million. Later offered 3B and Google wanted 5B so no deal. And Yahoo was offered 40B by Microsoft and they didn't want to sell. And later they sold for 4.6B. Whoever said the world's biggest MMO runescape should remove the wilderness and free trade. They threw a literal fortune down the drain just because they didn't understand their own product. Radcliffe Line. The process to divide India and Pakistan boundary in 1947 was done hastily and without major considerations to local populace religion. Radcliffe was not a geography guy and majorly messed up the process. Millions died. Bink. Let's invade Russia must somewhere up the list. Twice. How about someone who made two terrible decisions? He was instrumental in the creation of leaded gasoline and CFCs. Freon. He helped damage the environment on a massive scale, and for a bonus decision he made a pulley system for his bed that lead to his own death by strangulation. If this guy isn't given a spot in the Bad Decisions Hall of Fame then that seems like another failure. Brutus decided to join Cassius in murdering the dictatorial tyrant. Caesar. The reason? They suspected his intent to become a king. Which then started a chain of events leading to his adopted son Caesar becoming a military dictator without equal. Having all the powers of a king without being called one. When this Caesar Augustus dies, his name and title is passed on for the next 400 years almost like you would a crown. Monarchies then returned all over Europe. In the style of Augustus Caesar. And so, the decision of Brutus to join the conspiracy in effect changed all of western civilization for the next 1900 years to adopt the very political style he wanted to avoid. It would not be until the 1770s when America and later France would begin revolting and experimenting with democracies and republics. Maybe the worst business decision ever made was by Xerox with their Alto computer. Xerox invented the graphical interface modern computers use. Desktop. Folders. Copy paste etc. They basically invented the modern computer in the 70s. But the problem was. The people in charge at the time were businessmen without any technical knowledge so they didn't realize what they had. They did nothing with it and gave it away to universities and showed other companies. The famous story is that Steve Jobs saw this and within 5 minutes realized this was the way computers would work in the future. He copied it. Because Xerox didn't patent their invention and didn't do anything with it and the rest is history. Xerox could have been Apple or Microsoft. Or both. They could have had a monopoly on the entire PC industry. Almost every company uses Windows in their offices. I think 80 or 90% of consumers uses Windows. That could have been Xerox. They had the tech maybe 10 years before anyone else. They could have been the most valuable company of all time but they just gave it away. The guy that sold the bottling rights for Coca-Cola. For one dollar. And never even made the guy pay the one dollar. Hitler. Who wants to fight a two front war? Well. Having just watched Chernobyl. The first human by deciding to not live in a tree. Jessica Biel not naming her child Bamo. The guy who rejected Hitler's Art Academy application. Stealing John Wick's car and killing his dog. 299 total kills and counting. 
My girlfriend just broke up with me. So I wanna say that one. Hey. Let's create a coffee machine that uses a single use plastic cup for every cup of coffee or tea. How bad can the trash from that really be? I actually read that the creator of the K cup, John Sylvan, regrets inventing the pod system. Mao Zedong. Pest campaign. He basically told his nation to take pots and pans to kill all the sparrows. However, the ecosystem was disturbed and the locust population skyrocketed. Seeds. He thought that planting seeds 1 meter in the ground would result in greater roots and better harvest. He also thought that putting tons of seeds in one compact area would cause a better harvest. All the seeds died however, around 30 million or so died from famine under his rule. Hey, look at the other nations industrializing. Let's smelt all our metal to build better infrastructure. What? It creates pig iron which is super unstable and impure therefore being ultimately useless? Oops. Mal. Gavrilo Princip shooting Archduke Franz Ferdinand. On that day, a man acted upon his self-constructed vendetta against a non-tyrannical monarch. Thinking the world would remember him as a symbol against foreign tyranny, a symbol of national sovereignty, a year later, 10 million men were dead. Sultan Murad IV sending the first flying man in history, Hezeftan Ahmad Salibi flying 3 kilometers over the Bosporus in 1638, into exile instead of putting all efforts into aviation. Anatoly Dyatlov making sure with every step, that reactor 4 at Chernobyl exploded in 1986. If you believe in the creation story, Eve single-handedly doomed all of humanity. Murdoch double-crossing Rambo. Obviously. Coming back game 5 only to rupture your Achilles. Gerald Ratner talking it about his own business. He was ousted and the firm almost collapsed before restructuring and rebranding. Going up against a Sicilian when death is on the line. Henry Tande who supposedly spared Adolf Hitler's life during the war. The story is set on the 28th of September 1918. While Tande was serving with the 5th Duke of Wellington's regiment, and relates that a weary German soldier wandered into Tande's line of fire. The enemy soldier was wounded and did not even attempt to raise his own rifle. Tande chose not to shoot. The German soldier saw him lower his rifle and nodded his thanks before wandering off. That soldier is purported to have been Adolf Hitler. When MR. Hans tried to bang that horse. A little background. Guy who made Google Plus. My great great grandfather, a carpenter, did some work for a poor painter in the neighborhood. The painter had no money, so he offered either a bottle of wine or a painting. My great great grandfather chose the wine. The painter was Edward Munch, and the painting would have been worth millions upon millions today, or even just a few decades later, if translated to today's money. Edit. Reply to the first guy who pointed it out. True doesn't really qualify. I guess what makes a decision really bad is when you should be able to see the consequences. This is edgy, but here you go. The decision of caste-based reservation system of India. We don't say the name. I am totally not proud of India country for this. Me. When. Against my better judgment. I opened a kennel to let two angry pit bulls out. Their owner said, just let them out. They won't hurt you. Next thing I remember is being flown in a medical helicopter to the hospital, where I spent over 2 months and had 18 surgeries to repair the damage those dogs did. Yep. Worst single decision in history. For sure. Nokia. Yes so this phone will kill you what? Developed first smartphone way before Apple, but did not believe them to be the future. They just continued developing the old style phones. 2005, Reddit was launched. The Soviet government not informing their nuclear power plants of the defect which caused Chernobyl to melt down and almost destroy all of Eastern Europe. Probably whoever it was in Cornell's admissions department that accepted, Thomas Midgley Jr., to study engineering. He was responsible for both putting lead in gasoline and for creating CFCs. It's arguable that he's single-handedly responsible for more atmospheric damage to the planet than any other single person in history. Two terrible decisions for the price of one. 
The British gave Native Americans blankets diseased with smallpox to thin out their ranks during the French and Indian War. They didn't anticipate just how deadly this would be, some tribes losing as much as 90% of their number due to the epidemic. When Edward Jenner invented the smallpox vaccine, Britain made fast allies by exporting it out to the world. Some of those shipments were to be sent to the United States, with the intention of helping both the colonial American populace and the Native American populace. Only problem was that the colonials and the natives were having a bit of a war for the West at the time. The US Army took the vaccines hostage, with the intention of letting more natives die, until they gave up and moved into the reservations the US Army had built for them. Native Americans just can't catch a break at all. Thomas Midgley Jr. can lay claim to three. First, he discovered and helped popularize the use of lead in petrol gasoline, causing unimaginable harm to the atmosphere and our brains. He contracted lead poisoning when working on the project, but apparently neglected to draw any conclusions from this. Second, he lead the team that discovered Freon, the first chlorofluorocarbon, and helped popularize the use of CFCs in refrigeration and industrial applications causing further unimaginable harm to the atmosphere, it suggested that he had a greater impact on the atmosphere than any other single person in history. As for the third, well, straight from Wikipedia, in 1940, at the age of 51, Midgley contracted poliomyelitis, which left him severely disabled. He devised an elaborate system of ropes and pulleys to lift himself out of bed. In 1944, he became entangled in the device and died of strangulation. Invading Russia. Always invading Russia. That one time Nintendo had a partnership with Sony to develop a CD based console but in the end changed their mind and kicked Sony out cause they decided to stick with cartridges. Sony then thought screw this. We'll make our own console. With blackjack and hookers and created the PlayStation as a ducky towards Nintendo. The Serbian gunman who decided to kill Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Ice Town cost Ice Clown his town crown. When Bill Murray ate that gas station egg salad sandwich. The ducking fish that crawled out of the water about 2 billion years ago. Duck that fish. Making Diablo immortal. Edit. This is getting so much attention. Thank you kind stranger for the platinum. Bush's decision to invade Iraq in 2003, there was no cause or direct threat, and it led to hundreds of thousands of deaths, trillions of dollars spent, and the creation of ISIS. Whoever signed the bill passing prohibition. Hong Zikwin declared the Taiping Rebellion after he had a nervous breakdown from failing the imperial examinations. He proclaimed that he was the brother of Jesus Christ. 20-30 million people died. Supreme Court Justice Robert B. Tenney wrote the Dred Scott v. Sandford decision. It was definitely the worst decision made by the Supreme Court saying, blacks, had no rights which the white man was bound to respect. Edit. Typo. Blockbuster not buying Netflix. Burning of the Library of Alexandria. We're still working on this decision on letting the planet rot, but it will be one of the worst decisions. Capital M. Nietzsche Amelin thinking he could direct a movie adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. David Cameron's decision to call a referendum on Brexit, closely followed by Theresa May taking a snap general election and losing her party's majority. One and a half goes chili peppers in. My eye itches. It's just a little ice. Keep going. Capt of the Titanic. JK folks. When Hitler decided to betray the Soviet Union, that was pretty disastrous for him and thankfully beneficial to the rest of the world. He also ordered the Luftwaffe to bomb civilian targets in England. This caused the Allies to strike back at Germany's own civilian and industrial heartland even harder. So then Hitler ordered the Luftwaffe back to defend the homeland and that put a serious cap on his capabilities. Up until then, the Luftwaffe was key in Germany's blitzkrieg strategy. Without it. They couldn't grab new territory as fast as they were able in 1940. World War II is actually full of disastrous decisions Hitler personally made against the own good advice of his generals and advisors. I guess being a speed addicted egomaniac will do that for you. 
the development of nuclear weapons was probably inevitable, and several situations arose that balanced Armageddon on a knife edge. Many historical decisions could have tipped the balance via butterfly effect. So I take these questions in that light, all those terrible decisions, luckily, led to us to still be around to make a few more. The British refusing to lower taxes on the Americans as it started the age of revolutions that destroyed almost all the power royals had. Myself, last night, shouldn't have gone for the burrito. Cancelling Firefly after its first season. Eight years ago when that guy bought two large pizzas for 10,000 bitcoin. William Howard Taft running for US president, prior to World War 1. The US elections took place with Woodrow Wilson winning with a 36%, give or take, majority. How could this happen? Taft. The election was split three ways. Wilson for the Democrats, and Taft and Teddy Roosevelt for the Republicans. They split the vote and Wilson won. Had Taft not split the vote Roosevelt would have won and serve a third presidential term. As president, Roosevelt would have almost definitely pushed the US won World War 1 much earlier than Wilson did possibly shortening the war by up to a year. The main impact of this would have been on Russia, while it wouldn't have saved the Tsar. It would have put down Lenin and prevented the rise of communism, as it would have denied Lenin the public backing he needed, given that the current govt didn't look quite so incompetent. With no Lenin, no Stalin, no mass genocides. Speaking of genocides, the fear of communist takeover largely fueled support for the Nazi party and without them. Hitler would have lived and died a fringe extremist with very few people even noticing him. TLDR. Taft ran for president. Split the vote. Denied Roosevelt a third term. Which lead to a prolonged World War 1. The Russian communist takeover. World War 2. Cold War. Etc. Hum. Here are a few candidates. Hitler Napoleon. For attacking Russia. Dyatlov for various things he decided at Chernobyl. But there are so many versions of that it's hard to say who was most responsible. Whoever ordered Pearl Harbor, for ordering the attack, licensing thalidomide for use against morning sickness, killed about 40% of the unborn babies and had horrendous effects on many of the rest, using hydrogen to fly the Hindenburg. Franz Ferdinand's driver took the wrong turn. 